Now, I'm delighted to be joined by Kwasi Kwarteng, Liz Truss's Chancellor and Tory MP for Spellthorne. Thank you for joining Hello, me. Hello, Camilla. Very nice to see you. Lovely to see you. I know you haven't reacted to the budget yet, so we're no, delighted to have public. this yeah. exclusive. In general, how are you? It's been a bit of a tumultuous well, time. Well, I'm... I'm, I'm uh... Fine, actually. I look back on my time in government, and it wasn't just chance. I was business secretary yes. before that, um, and you know it was a, a great privilege to be in that position. But of course, it didn't uh, end well, though. Well, no, I was sacked. Um, but uh, you know that, that's that's politics. There are ups and downs. Let's get on to that a little later. I'm very intrigued to know what you made of what Jeremy Hunt delivered in the House of Commons on Wednesday. Look, I think it was a good budget. I think really, um, yeah. I think. I mean, I know you want me to say that it was a <laughs> yes, disaster. I do. And terrible <laughs> yes. and all that. Well, look, let's be honest. Things like the corporation tax rise are, are not from your playbook. No, I mean, you I, did I've something disagreed. completely different, and he's reversed with that. it all. And that was why, in a way, that was why, of course, uh, I was sacked because uh, ultimately there was uh, a disagreement about um, corporation tax, um, and it was felt, given the market turmoil which uh, occurred, uh, that we had to reverse uh, not putting it up. Uh, and of course, I disagreed with putting it up in the first place. But the markets have steadied now, so yeah. has he been overcautious? There are businesses who are saying, hang on, the Tories are no longer the party that represents us. The tax burden's at an all-time high. This is exactly what you and Liz Truss railed against. Yes. So you must have been a bit underwhelmed to have seen what was presented well, look, on Wednesday. Well, what we can't do is pretend that last uh, October didn't happen or last September didn't happen. There was an adverse reaction uh, to the budget that I put forward, the mini-budget that Liz Truss and I uh, put forward. And uh, Jeremy was appointed by Liz Truss. I mean, people forget that, but yeah. she, he was actually appointed by her. Um, and I think he's done a good job in stabilising the situation. But does the reaction to your mini-budget indicate that we can never have a kind of low-tax, high-growth approach to our economy here. Does it mean that the markets were spooked temporarily and it won't happen again? Does it mean that we have to resign ourselves to this Treasury safety does it type approach for all eternity? I mean, what's your fear? We're never going to return so, to Thatcherite economics, are we? Well, look, so, so there are lots of questions there. And I think, I think you're right. I think there's a broad question, there's a broad aim to have a lower tax, uh, higher, more productive economy. Now, the question, and, and that strategic goal was one that Liz had, that one I share. I think also Rishi Sunak and Jeremy Hunt ultimately want to see the tax burden come down. They've but the question, way of it, but the they? question ha is how you do that. From where we are now, how do you actually get there? And I think uh, Jeremy, rightly perhaps, has adopted a cautious approach given what happened uh, last winter. Uh, and he's also uh, very much, I think, uh, looking at the markets, looking at what Treasury officials are doing and trying to, to do it in a methodical way. And that's where I think I uh, and Liz got it wrong. I think we should have had a more a methodical, uh, a more process-driven way of getting to that strategic goal, which, as you say, is lower taxes uh, and incentivising uh, economic activity. So let's drill on on that. Do you think that she was in too much of a rush? I mean, she had spent the leadership race throughout the summer pitch-rolling this low-tax agenda. She'd been talking about Treasury orthodoxy. What actually went wrong in the execution? I think there was too much uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the statement, in the mini-budget. And I think it was a very bold thing to do, not to have OBR forecasts, uh, not to have any spending uh, uh, on the on the spending side but of the whose ledger. Whose idea was that? Hers or yours? That, that was a, that was we we agreed that. I'm not I'm not. Good. I mean, I take I take responsibility. Why did you think? I think there was a view. I think there was a view that uh, and the, a lot of the OBR uh, forecasts had been wrong in the in the past, yeah. and they put a constraint on what the government could do. And I think in terms of the mini budget, there were there were lots of things going on. The interest rates were going up uh, across the world, particularly the Fed. There were lots of other circumstances, and people said, "Oh, the currency hit at an all-time low." But actually, the, the, the yen and the euro were very low as well at that at that particular time. But I think there was um, the failing that we had was it was there was too much, and it should have been a more methodical uh, approach. Uh, and that's what, frankly, Jeremy Hunt and Rishi Sunak are doing. It's 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 more measured. Uh, it's a little bit calmer and it's more methodical. Now, the direction I'd like to change. I'd like to have lower taxes, but method and process are very important. But when you were actually doing the mini budget and working on it, did you have any inkling that it was going to cause the reaction it did? I mean, what were the warnings coming from civil servants at the Treasury no, about I mean, cutting out the OBR and 
don't forget again you did double down didn't you on saying that not, yeah that was, there was more to come and then there would be more, more yeah so so that was, was that, that a was, mistake that, that probably was a mistake and i think you've got we got as politicians to be able to put up our hands and say we got things wrong i think my a lot of my comments were misinterpreted i mean what i had wanted to do was to have another statement uh, which was showing the spending side uh, of of the equation um, to show that the uh, unfunded tax cuts were actually going to be partially funded through spending restraint. Um, and that should have been done together. And I think one forgets the immense uh, speed with which the mini budget uh, was, was launched. I mean, it, it, we, I think we took office on the 6th of September. Yeah. And the actual budget itself was on the 23rd of September. But Again, who, whose idea was it to well, do it that let's quickly? Well, not let's not go into whose idea. Well, I mean, it's you know, interesting. We're, we're all collective. There's, there's, everyone's in a hurry. We're and actually, all, you're thinking that you just rushed it too much. Th that was my. That's my view. That's Did my you view. think, think that at the time? God, you're um, not giving me much no, time. No, I'm, I'm responsible. You know, I'm not here coming here to exonerate myself of responsibility. I think senior politicians, people at the head of government, should take yeah. responsibility for what what happened. Um, and I think looking back, hindsight is a beautiful thing. But looking back. Um, we should have had a more measured and, and a more cautious approach. But wasn't anyone in the Treasury saying, you know, this could have a negative impact, you know, in a real world sense on mortgage rates? Did nobody flag the LDIs thing, which no, I the LDI you... things nobody knew about that. I mean, right. I mean that, and that was that was uh, that was a, cr a critical piece. I think in a way that was what uh, undid uh, the government or Liz Truss's administration. I mean, viewers and listeners might not be au fait with sure. the intricacies of LDIs, sure. but there's this discovery that all of these LDIs, mm. which are these derivatives, are held in one fund. There were there were three funds in particular, and what they'd done was that they they borrowed money to buy. Gilt's government debt, at, which has a 20-year maturity, so it's going out uh, 20 years. And as a consequence of interest rates going up, what they held, the value of what they held went down very sharply, and they needed a bailout. And that was actually what contributed to the unravelling of certainly my position and, and ultimately of the Prime Minister's. So just talk us through you and Liz Truss making that discovery, being told that. What are you then thinking and saying to each that other? That was, I mean, there, then there was a conversation about, you know, what the, the, the bank was going to do, the Bank of England. I think we would have liked to have seen them extend uh, the, the, the provision in terms of uh, the bailout, if you like, if you want to call it that way. And they were very determined that on the 14th of October that would run out. There was a spectre, there was the worry that there'd be some sort of market um, uh, reaction on the, on the Monday, the following Monday, which was, I think, the 17th. Um, and that, that was what was focusing the Prime Minister's mind. So as you will remember, I was in Washington yes. at the IMF and I was told to come back a day early uh, and that was the day I was sacked. Yeah. Did you oh, know you were coming back to be sacked? I had a 50-50 I, I, I view. I thought it was likely, but, but at the same time I, I didn't understand it because I, it was obvious to me that once I was sacked, her position was untenable. Yeah. So what conversations went on between you both? Because we know that you've always been politically very close. You know, you came as a package. We always knew when she was running for the leadership that you would be her chancellor. Mm. So as that all starts to unfold, what, what just let us in a little bit on those conversations. You're on a flight and you don't know whether you're going to land to a job or out of a job. Well, yeah, and then, and then I found out uh, on Twitter on the way to Downing Street. Well, how did that feel? Um, well, that was an odd feeling because, uh, I, as I remember, it was on Steve Swinford, you know, uh, yes, the Times. Yes, of the Times. Uh, and, and formerly the Telegraph. Formerly of the Telegraph. And, um, and my special advisor said to me, oh, have you seen Stephen's tweet? Steve's tweet, and I said no, and she passed it on to me and said, oh, Kwasi Kwarteng has been or will be sacked. That it was pretty definitive. And I said, that's definitely true, because he, he, you know, his tweets generally <laughs> turn out to be but true. But then surely there's this enormous sense of betrayal that your kind of political bestie has thrown you under a bus and not given you advance well, warning. Well, look, I, I, think, I think it was it was clear that we were under a huge amount of pressure. And I think the view that Number 10 took was that uh, they had to steer course, they had to change yeah, but course. But come on, Kwasi, how did you feel? Like you're, you're basically being put up as the scapegoat for this entire economic policy. Well, look, that's, that's, that's the way politics goes. I mean, I think, you, you, you know, it's a team effort. Um, and you, your job is to make sure that the team captain, the team itself, uh, can, can how, operate how did she explain it to you? You know, you need to go to stabilise the markets. Well, yeah, I mean, that was the first thing. And then she said, um, I think she said very clearly that, uh, you know, in order for her to survive, um, you know, that, that, was, that was something that, a measure that needed to be taken. And I actually said at the time, 
uh, that once she'd sacked me, I think that was it. That was the, yeah. the, 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 you know, because it showed back. weakness that she wasn't well, going to support. It never works well when prime ministers sack chancellors. You know, you don't need to be a great student of history to, to yeah. see that 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 makes the prime minister look much weaker. Um, and I, at the time, it was reported. Uh, I said I thought she had three or four weeks. That I don't know how it got into the papers, but it did, uh, the Sunday papers. And in the end, it was six days. So I was sacked on the 14th of October, which was a Friday. Um, and then uh, she announced her resignation on the Thursday, so it wasn't even a week. Have you spoken to that. her much yeah, since? Yeah, I mean, we're, 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 we're friendly. You're still friends? Said, uh, yeah, we're, we're friendly. How long did it take before you spoke to her again? I think we spoke pretty much about a week after she left office. And how was that? Well, it was, you know, it's an interesting uh, conversation. But I, I think, you know, when, when, when you work very closely with people um, and you've built a, a relationship over, over years, professional relationship, I think it's, you know, it's an adult thing to try and, and, and work out, you know, where things went wrong. We still believe passionately in a low tax uh, economy. Um, but, you know, that's something that we're, we're, still, we're still focused on. So you're still of the kind of the ideas were right, but the execution was wrong. I think the idea is, I, I, I think, I don't understand what it means to be a conservative if you don't believe ultimately in lower taxes broadly. Yeah. Now, uh, and that's a strategic goal. There is a question of how you get there, and there are different approaches. And I think what the Prime Minister and the, the current Chancellor are doing is broadly right. I think you've got to be methodical. Now, I'd like to see things maybe done more quickly, but you do have to be methodical. You have to carry institutions with you. Uh, and I think that's what they're trying to do. But you've written, along with former Chancellors Philip Hammond and indeed George Osborne, that you didn't think it was a good idea for him to have stuck with the corporation tax rise. So you can't possibly support that in the budget. So I've said very clearly that I don't, I didn't, I, actually I, I was, I phrased myself, I phrased it carefully what I said. I don't think it helps incentivise investment if you put up corporation taxes to, to that extent. And I've said that consistently. I've always been of that What view. would you ideally like corporation tax to be? Should we be on a par with Ireland? We should certainly be more competitive against France and Germany, I would imagine, would be your position. So when I came into Parliament, I think the corporation tax rate was 28%. And one of the things that George Osborne did very successfully was to reduce that uh, to roughly where it is, uh, where it is now. Um, and my view was that we should stick to that. Now, I tried to implement that. There was an adverse reaction among other uh, measures that we took. Um, and now we've got a, a new prime minister, a newish prime minister. We've got a, a new chancellor, which... Liz Truss appointed. It wasn't Rishi Sunak who appointed Jeremy. I know, but she did that because she had to do this uh, kind of like safety-first approach. He's not necessarily a Chancellor that is espousing your sort of economic ideals, is he? Well, well, well we, we tried it one way. It didn't work. The Prime Minister changed course. And I'm very much of the view that, as a, as a backbencher, I should be supporting, not only representing my constituents, but I should be supporting the government. I should be supporting the Prime Minister. And it, it's very irritating to see people who've been very high up in government uh, not backing necessarily everything that, you know, that the Prime Minister's trying to do. Because we're not going to win unless we are united. Um, why did you... This was a question that Mike on our People's Panel wanted me to ask you, so let me ask you, why did you sack Tom Scholar and was that a mistake? I, I think the Tom Scholar issue was very different. I mean, people conflate uh, the two. I think he was... A, I said at the time, I think he was a great civil servant. Um, he'd been at the Treasury for 30 years. And now it's written up with hindsight that somehow that had something to do with the fallout. I, I think there were separate But separate why did issues. you sack 